Welcome back, Hordlings, to more Spellcasting 201. You're headed into Friday. Chapter 5, Royal Blush. Funeral, a pageant whereby we attest our respect for the dead by enriching the Undertaker. Ambrose Bierce. A notorious thief entering a prison was being divested of all his possessions. Among them was an old tarnished coin. He asked, would you mind if I held on to this? Why, inquired the warden. Oh, just sentiment, he explained. You see, it's the first dollar I ever stole. From the deepest sleep, you are jerked to your senses by your elder fratmates. Whooping, they grab you and roughly drag you downstairs to the cellar. Shivering and still half asleep, you're shoved against the wall. A missive apparently tucked into your cloak as you slept now flutters to the floor. Eric Moulton Cock, the fraternity prez, is here wearing face paint ceremonial robes. And the obligatory vacant expression. All right, let's get our assignments for the day. Pledge Master Cow Patty descends, and the assembled upperclassmen begin balking and squawking like a hen house of fire. Cow Patty produces the rubber chicken and beats the ever living fuck out of y'all. Listen, oh worthless initiates, for well, here are your assignments for the day. Because these will be your most difficult assignments yet, and you have until 11.30 this evening to complete them. Dirty fuck pile, you will skydive into the middle of President Ticking Clock's funeral. Dances with sheep shit, you will weld shut the front door of Grandma at the pie. Your attention robes until Eagle Beak, you will go into Balmoral City and moon the Queen during her weekly procession at 1.00. But don't think I'm going to give you a pass to get off campus this time. I've been way too easy on you. Up to now. <laughs> Pledges, you are the lowest of the low. Not fit to lick dried puns came off the foot of a horse flies nutsack. Succeed today and you will join the cream of the crop. The egotistical of the elite. The best of the best. The farts of sorcerer you. The others file up the stairs squawking and flapping their arms. Leaving you alone in the cellar. Okay, well, first thing we want to do is get our missive here. Read the missive. Darling Ernie, I'm not worthy of your attention yet, so I have left to enroll in Housewife You. And when I have become a perfect housewife, I will return to make your beds and clean your cloaks. Love, Eve. Okay. That's all right, Eve. I got a date with the queen, baby. Hey! All right. Listen to Duck. You hear Cal Patty's muffled voice. No more screw ups, Molten Rock. Today's our last chance. If the queen's guards don't get him and the professor doesn't come through, I'll strangle the little piece of crud with my own two hands. I want his pathetic, stinky, miserable, ugly little hide. Do you hear me? He's dead meat. He hasn't got a prayer. He's a goner. History. Vamoose. It's difficult to tell sound being muffled by the duct, but it does sound as if cow patty's beginning to spray at the mouth. Bye-bye, Ernie. See you later, pal. Bon voyage. Adios. Sayonara. Auf Wiedersehen. Mickey, go, go, flump. Glick so, got so. All right, that guy's got fucking problems. We're going to get our spell book. Oh, we need to save as well. Chapter 5. The final chapter. I believe this is the last day, although it's, uh, I think, split into two parts. What about our bed sheet? Get bed sheet. What I do with a bed sheet? I dropped it somewhere. We need our uh, magic bush as well. Drop that in the room. 
Uh, my, oh yeah, there's my simple berry bush. Okay, I need that. Okay, note to self, leave all my shit in one place next game. Not all over the fucking place. Looks like I left some stuff in my bedroom, some stuff in the alchemy lab, and some stuff at the main entrance. But anyways, we're also going to want our bed sheet, so let's go ahead and grab that. Let's go ahead and save. We can grab this old game hoarder rules here by now. All right, let's go ahead and head back to the appliance. <clears throat> Drop all so we can get in. Press both buttons to open the door. So the dial to five. The control panel transforms like clay in the hands of an unseen sculptor. The control panel now has a large view screen, currently blank. To the right is, to the right and left of the screen are dials, and above it is the usual silver lever. Turn the right dial to seven. Turn right dial to seven. A fuzzy image of a cafeteria worker appears on the screen. All right, we get the danger, danger, depart the appliance at once. Oh wait, I think we need to wait inside to get turned. Helix of magical power surrounds you and warps your senses. The, the disorientation slowly passes and you discover that you've turned into a cafeteria worker. You're surrounded by a swirling smoke which disperses as the appliance swings open. Leave everything here but our spell book for now. You know how I like to leave my shit all over the place. The gate nip materializes and hovers nearby. Have a good time off campus, sir. I do be wary of those nasty roadside bandits. We can get out now because we're a cafeteria worker. We're not a student. The east-west dirt road is wide and well-maintained. Beyond the edge of the road is thick, untamed undergrowth. The city jail lies to the west. The road bends here, turning north and east. You 
Stand amidst the hustle and bustle of the city's central marketplace. To the east, behind imposing gates, is the parade ground which surrounds the royal palace. A guard stands before the gates, and a sign has been hung next to the gates. To the west is a tavern, and to the north is an ancient shrine. A road leads to the south. I want to save and get drunk at the tavern. Probably a good time to save anyways. Friday, 10 a.m. All right. Uh, how do we get enter? This is a large, crowded, gloomy tavern. The tables, their wood, scarred and stained, are crowded close. The exit lies to the east. A waitress wearing a stunningly effective medieval barmaid outfit stands nearby. As you admire her figure, she has more curves than a mountain road. She turns slightly in shocks of all shocks. It's your old neighbor from Port Gecko, Lola Tigerbelly. You wanted to jump her bones in the worst way for years. But she didn't know you from a garden slug. But that was before last year when you saved her life and became a big her hero in front of her. Now you can hardly wait to greet her. Surely she'll be excited and overjoyed to see you. Pop, twist, zingo, zap. You look down at your body, which is once again undeniably, disappointingly, totally Ernie-ish. All right. Kiss Lola. As you approach Lola, she notices you for the first time. Oh, hi, uh, Bernie. Lola yawns. Are you still at solder you? Why should I, one of the most desirable women in the city, waste my time dating a total dweeb? Oh, yeesh, control yourself, Ernie. You haven't changed a bit. Totally dominated by your hormones. Oh, hormones. Hormones. What a putz. Yeah, she's got some uh, nice little titties there. Um, well, anyways, we'll be back. We'll moon her. Great, 28 tables to wait on, and I've got to watch Primo Geek here demonstrate its kindergarten-level maturity. I suppose you're a lousy tipper, too, huh? Hey, patrons aren't allowed to touch the girls. Strict rules. Order of management. Besides, I consider you to be a smelly, pimple-faced, greasy-haired twit. I don't think she's into you, Ernie. That's funny, the guy doing my tile in the house, his name is Ernie. I have to ask if they're related. All right. Whoop. Let's go north into the shrine. This shrine to St. Balmoral, believed to be the oldest building in the city, has been preserved unchanged for centuries. An unbroken wooden floor spans the room. In one corner of the floor is a small pool. In more ignorant times, travelers believed that tossing gold coins in such pools would convince the saint to give them good luck. A wide opening between pillars leads south. Cast the plummet. Gold coins from the pool above end up here in this natural cavern below the shrine. A primitive fresco, extremely faded, adorns the wall. A steep stone stair leads upward. You see piles of gold pieces here, and your score has gone up by 25. As you try to scoop up the pile of gold, you encounter an obstacle, a spell box buried in the pile. And both the spell box and the gold end up on the ground. A finger of energy leaps from the spell box to your spell book, dazzling your eyes. When your vision returns to normal, you see that the spell box has vanished. You take the pile of gold pieces.
examine fresco. So faded is the fresco, it's difficult to make out anything. It seems to depict a forest scene. Uh, depicting a lot more than a forest scene, my friends. I'm seeing some naked fairies with some big old titties. You climb the stone stairs at the top. You discover a hidden one-way trap door in the recently laid wooden floor. It closes behind you, becoming invisible again. Yeah, well, that's why we cast a diplomat. Give gold to Lola. Lola scoops up the gold. Wow, Ernie, I had no idea you were so eligible. Let's go out after I get off work. We can have dinner or go shopping or something. She notices a mud-covered coin and flips it back to you. You can keep this one. It's dirty. Oh, and why don't you take this? She hands you a ticket. I won't have a chance to go. See you later, bitch boy. She walks away, clinking the gold and whistling. Tried to get the game in naughtier mode, it didn't work. Give ticket to guard. Thank you, sir. It's nice that we're opening the palace grounds to a wider spectrum of the populace. Enjoy the parade. The guard ushers you through the gates. A lush lawn punctuated by a beautifully manicured garden surrounds the royal palace to the east. The palace is immense of impressive side, size, which undoubtedly sapped the life work of many skilled stone workers. To the west, beyond the guarded gates, are the bustling streets of Balmoro City. And wait until one. The Herald's trumpets announce the beginning of the Royal Parade! The mighty portals of the Royal Palace open, and the first of the Royal Horsemen prance forth in proud formation. Horses and soldiers move past as the parade continues. The Queen's float emerges from the palace and pauses amidst her cheering subjects. You flip up your cloak and give the old Queenie the old sunny side up. The score's gone up by a hundred. The shock crowd gasps at your audacity. The Royal Guards arrest you and haul you off to jail, pending the erection of suitable gallows. Prison cells are the same all over the world and this is one of them. Other than the iron bars to the east, you're surrounded by hopelessly thick stone walls. Besides the rock-hard, bug-ridden bed, the only amenity is a small wash basin filled with scummy water. The sounds of hammering and nailing are audible outside the jail, as the royal carpenters busily erect your gallows. You have fucked up now, Ernie. Fortunately, you still remember everything from the How-To Plummy Book. So why is your retention so bad when it comes to your school, school courses? In moments, the hot water is repaired. The jailer walks past and sneers at you. They're building a mighty fine gallows out there. They say it'll be ready by three. Half the city's gonna turn out for this one. We better save here in case we die. And maybe we'll die on purpose. It's Friday, 1.30 p.m. You open the drain and the cold water empties from the basin. You turn on hot water for the moment and the basin fills with hot water. We wash the mud off of the coin.
Let's see if we can get Ernie killed. Accompanied by a somber beating of drums, a squadron of palace guards leads you up to a newly constructed gallows. Newspaper reporters shout to you as you're led up the steps. Why'd you do it? Are you protesting the cut and flax price supports? Are you a member of St. Winners Winersburg Liberation Front? What's your underwear size? As the noose is placed around your neck, a ripple of excitement electrifies the spectators. Vendors pass through the crowd selling pretzels and ice cream and little glow in the dark gallows. A chanticleer reads the charges against you. Ernest Agelbeek, who has on this day moon the queen of Peloria, shall hang by the neck until dead. As the platform opens, your last sight is ironically the just rising moon. The end. You've achieved a score of 735 out of 1,855 moves. This gives you the rank of level 5 sorcerer. But you are fucking dead. We quelp the coin. So this, the quelp spell, I wanted to show you in the book, but anyways, it's the spell of summoning. So when we quelp the coin, since it's the queen's coin, it summons her. I don't know why I keep skipping all the text, though. Queen Libido appears, looking very disoriented, which only heightens her youthful appeal. Say, aren't you the one who, uh, you know, during the royal parade? Reddening dramatically, she stammers to a halt. Oh, well, my gods apparently didn't care for it, but I thought it was kind of exciting. She notices the coin and plucks it away. I hate that issue. It makes me look so, so serious. She wrinkles her nose and chucks the coin out the window. Let's get out of this dreary place and skedaddle on back to the palace. She wraps her bubble wand against the bars. Oh, God! As you exit the jail with Queen Libido tugging at your arm, you run smack into Lola Tigerbelly. You two-timing bastard! Well, I wouldn't go out with you now if you gave me every gold piece in Peloria. She slaps you loudly across the face and storms off in a huff. Trouble sure seems to follow you, comments the queen, leading you across the palace grounds. Congratulations for solving the thrilling jail puzzle. Your reward, Nookie with Queenie. Exit west. You see Queen Libido here. Your score has gone up by 25. The queen flings her bubble wand across the room and sprawls tummy first onto a sumptuous mattress. Well, I've seen your bottom. Want to see mine? Uh, duh. After I pick up the wand. You take the bubble wand of Black Wand. A graduation nymph appears. You graduated to rank of level six sorcerer. The nymph vanishes without a trace. Just in time to fuck the queen. As you and Queen Libido couple, and the passion of the moment overwhelms you, a tiny portion of your mind remains semi-rational, marveling at the thought that insignificant little Ernie Eaglebeak is here, not only getting it on with the royal ruler of all of Peloria, but deflowering her as well. Oh, Ernie. What? That was wonderful. At least I think it was wonderful. I don't really have anything to compare it to. It was certainly wonderful compared to the Prime Minister with... Wonderful compared to discussing trade agreements with the Prime Minister. But you'd better get going. If the Royal Guard finds you here, they might execute you before I have a chance to explain. And besides, you've got an in-game to complete. She giggles and blows you a kiss as you withdraw from the room, that is. I came inside her. I'm about to have royal babies, baby. All right, we're back out on the palace grounds. <laughs> We need to head back to the university. I ain't got time for you, cow.
Sid dances with sheep, sneaks up to the GEP doorway, lugging a large flamethrower. He strikes up a flame and begins licking away at the doorway. The going is slow, and after a minute, GEP's fire alarm begins ringing, and Sid is forced to skedaddle. All right, there's obvious, obviously a lot of things we could do, we could test out, and we can try. But for sake of beating this game and getting on with our lives, let's get to it. back into the appliance room attach a bubble wand to appliance necromancy appears on the side of the appliance The appliance clicks, and then it sl swings slowly, ominously open, revealing a beckoning cavity. Without warning, Professor Hidden Muller springs into the room. In an even more stunning development, Chris Cowpatty follows right on his heels. Chuckling, Hidden Muller locks the lab door and pockets the key. I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes relating my entire scheme, he explains, because you're all going to be powerless to stop me, and because I have a few minutes to kill because I love to gloat, but mostly because the author wants to clue in those players who haven't figured out all the nuances yet. Hidden Muller cackles. Hot dang, that laugh is familiar. I've been plotting to become president of SU for a while, but I didn't expect to have to move this quickly. I thought that old goat ticking clock would hang in it a little longer. Now, with Hopping Turtle and Broken Links uh, removed from the picture, it all comes down to a choice between me and Moldy Bread Crust. <laughs> Enter my good friend and ally Chris Cowpatty. It turns out that in addition to refreshing lack of moral values, we also share a genuine dislike of a certain Ernie Eaglebeak. Chris was only too happy to help me by spying on you. He um, acquired the key to this lab, and he's also told me that you discovered that this appliance can turn a person into a different person. Hidden Moller smiles evilly. A very useful technique. He enters the appliance, which closes behind him. Do you want to continue waiting? Sure. The appliance opens and Professor Xavier Moldy Breadcrust steps out. But of course, it's not Moldy Breadcrust, but Hidden Muller having assumed his form. He speaks, and while the evil words are clearly Hidden Muller's, the voice is Moldy Breadcrust's. Now, before this marvelous little effect wears off, I shall visit the trustees and tell them that I, Xavier Moldy Breadcrust, withdraw my name from consideration for the office of president. Left with no other alternatives, the trustees by acclamation will select Bruce Hidden Muller. <laughs> One small point I haven't mentioned. My plans for after receiving the presidential orb of power, you see. I'm not really Bruce Hidden Muller, you little twerp. I'm your old stepfather, Joey Rottenwood. And my dreams of destroying this crummy little school will soon be realized. Before I leave, let me set up this magic monitor, which will allow you to see the events in the trustees' meeting room. Even though... Uh, where the fuck is it? Where I lost my shit. Even though I'll be locking you in here, I wouldn't want you to miss the wonderful moment when the trustees hand me the orb of power. He sets a small screen on the lab bench. Well, come along, Chris. Let's lead poor Ernie to stew in guilt-ridden self-abuse. He steps toward the door, then pauses and removes the bubble wand from the appliance and pockets it. We can't have you discovering new power levels now, can we? Finally, they depart, carefully locking the heavy door. Ain't that some shit, Ernie? Finale, star, storm, before the calm. It was his first day teaching spellcasting 101. 
He entered the room, rapped on the podium, and yelled, Class order! The entire class yelled in unison, We'll have beer! From the unauthorized biography of Otto Ticking Clock. The reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. Mark Twain. All right, folks, we're going to get right into the finale here and now. All right, we're going to pull the lever. Your glance closes and a helix of magical power surrounds you and warps your senses. You too are now moldy bread crust. You're surrounded by swirling smoke which disperses as the appliance swings open. Via the magic monitor, you hear and see the trustees deliberating. It's the finale. All right, let's examine our spell book. going to want to cast the spell of constipation. Your stomach wrenches and twists a little via the magic monitor you hear and see trustees deliberating. Rimp manhole. Too dark to see much. What's our light spell? Bip, right? No, that's uh, romantic music. Well, you may not be able to see, but you can see what is there uh, in the item section. So we're gonna frimp this manhole as well that puts us up in the pub donkey dung hall You've entered a small stuffy room desperately in need of more light and more ventilation. Portraits of past presidents of the school surrounded by baroque frames of gilded wood cover every wall. An ominous doorway fills the north end of the room and a stair can take you down. Next to the stairs, an opening for a dumbwaiter. Next to that is a large green button. The dumbwaiter arrives carrying a pastry cart. The pastry cart rolls out of the dumbwaiter and comes to a stop. 
pop twist, Zingo Zap. You look down at your body, which is once again undeniably, disappointingly, totally Ernie-ish. Did I not make it in time? Guess we gotta do it super quick. All right, this time instead of going west and west uh, and then south and up, I went southwest, north and up. I don't know if it's going to make a difference. We need to uh, be in disguise so we can get north of that nymph that stopped us the last time. North. You tingle as you enter an airy uh, shield against spell casting. This is a large somber room paneled in dark wood, swathed with thick blood red carpet. The windows are covered with heavy black drapes. The door to the south, something black marble, leads back to the ante room. On the opposite side of the room, a smaller door leads into the sanctum a large oval table a polished ebony fills most of the room the trustees are huddled around the table muttering arguing gesticulating wheezing and coughing you see a pastry cart here your score has gone up by 30. You look down and you're totally ernie again you push the cart along following closely behind and you're in the inter sanctum a small chamber with lone egress to the south, the sanctum of the trustees is a location shrouded in ceremony and mystique. You see a pastry cart, a president ticking clock's body, a presidential orb of power, and a portrait of president ticking clock. Greet ticking clock. We'll have to organize a seance first. Slide body onto cart. You slide Otto's corpse onto the cart. Cover body with the sheet. You drape the sheet over Otto's body. And then we shake our bush. We love shaking the bush. You inhale massive quantities of the stuff, leaving you sneezing, choking, gasping, and experience every other respiratory problem you care to name, but you feel furtive and light on your feet. The trustees are huddled around the table. One of the trustees sees you trying to wheel the cart past and without looking up reaches for an appetizer. In the nick of time, you veer the cart out of reach. But the sudden turn causes Otto's lifeless arm to fall out from under the sheet. In a panic, you stuff it back out of sight. Fortunately, the trustees seem oblivious. They take a solemn vote. It's decided. Let Bruce Hidden Mulder be summoned and let it be known that the transference of the orb shall occur shortly. You see Rotwood, now reverted back to his professor, hidden Mulder, Mulder persona, enter the meeting room. He cannot come close to hiding his smile as the trustees inform him of their decision. Steel Bubble Wand.
You pickpocket Joey and retrieve the bubble wand. The feeling of furtiveness passes. And now, well, you feel that the opposite of light on your feet, heavy on your feet, dark on your feet. You push the cards along, following closely behind. I guess nobody notices that it's Ernie. You score goes up by 50. All right, and we're stealing the body of Professor Otto. The pastry cart disappears. Alright, we're back with the pastry cart. We cast a deep limit to send it down. Now we're going to push the cart north. North again. You do a double take as you see dances with sheep push a huge flame throwing cannon toward the GEP entrance. He lights the fuse and the tremendous gout of white hot flame douses the doorway, reducing lintel hinges, hardware, and decor decorative ironwork into large fused lumps of impassable slag. Whistling gaily, Sid strolls away. It is seven o'clock. Push the card east a couple times into the Ivory Auditorium. Deployment myself. Now we are directly underneath. Basically, you get to pass. You, you walk through walls with a deployment spell. We're gonna reattach the the bubble wand to the appliance. Turning the power dial to six. The appliance opens and smoke billows from the interior. A golden light shines forth. And... A frail figure emerges, President Ticking Clock, looking quite alive, or at least as alive as you've ever seen him. Your score's gone up by a hundred. Otto rubs his head. Such a headache, such a bad dream. Hilary, Elevant, Annie, what am I doing in the Ivory Tower Lab? You relate recent events. Otto, with uncharacteristic energy, shouts, To the trustees' meeting room this instant! Once they transfer the presidential orb of power, there's no turning back! That fiend will dismantle the university! He speaks a simple teleportation spell. The trustees are about to complete the inauguration of Joey Rottenwood by handing him the presidential orb of power. You appear just as the trustee hands the orb to Hilden Molar. Ticking clock cries, Stop! That man is an imposter! Furthermore, I am not presently dead. Joey laughs and holds the orb aloft. You're too late, you meddlesome fool! The orb is mine! I hereby decree that all faculty, students, employees, buildings, and possessions of this university ought to be. The Ugugwa spells chooses just this moment to wear off. And all across the SU campus, a thousand toilets flush in unison. Deep below, a rumbling begins, grows, turns into a monstrous quaking, and then, just as it seems that the walls of the building will collapse, a geyser of shit 
and sewage and more shit explodes upwards at the very spot where the orb is right into Joey Rotten Fuck's face. Ah! Out of leaps, and in the leap that would be the envy of any third left rudder back, Melon Buster snatches the oar. He notices your look of amazement. I was quite the pockable star in my day, young man, he explains. The danger's past, Otto's shoulders sag, and he settles into a chair. This young man, believe it or not, brought me back from the land of the dead using a. Uh, uh, utilizing them, uh, it's not time for my warm milk. His head bobs and settles onto his chest to cool it. He falls into a heavy slumber. You glance around and discover the room to be deserted. Joey has once again escaped justice and the trustees are off enjoying the passing of the Ugua spell. Sometimes later, at the arcane ceremony in the nether levels of the HDB fraternity house, you are inducted as a full member, as Eric Molten Rock explains that Chris Cowpatty has been suspended indefinitely for violations of the initiation code. The end! The exciting and lustful adventure of Ernie Eagleby continues in Spellcasting 301. You've achieved a score of one fucking thousand out of one fucking thousand in 919 moves. This gives you the rank of junior. Gives me the rank of fucking badass, bang the queen. Anyways, folks, that wraps it up. Stay tuned for Spellcasting 301, coming up next.